everyone in the listening audience grab their scriptures, a pencil, and a piece of paper. Listen and learn the true meaning of the Old and New Testaments of the Bible, the Psalms of David, the Lost Books, and the Holy Quran. There are no more secrets. All false things will perish. So come and learn the undisputable teachings of the only man that has the answers to the problems of a troubled world, as Sayyid al-Imam Isa al-Hadi al-Mahdi. Are we not the bearers of witness that nothing will exist if Allah didn't create it? And that He is alone and has no part? And that all gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sustainer of all the boundless universes. All gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the generous eternal friend. And send salutations of Allah on all of His prophets and His apostles and on the Messiah, the anointed one. And on the Mahdi, the God, and on the Mujaddid, the Reformer, which was all sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send greetings and we send peace throughout the boundless universe to all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. And now, the true light. Featuring Es Sayyid Al Imam Isa Al Hadi Al Mahdi. I have quite a few questions, so this may take some time. Uh, what is the relationship between the cursed seed of Canaan and the unholy angels, if there is any? If there is any what? If there is any relationship between the two. Okay. The way in Christianity they tell you to be born again, correct? Mm -hmm. And they say you must be full of the Holy. Spirit. Spirit. Well, in Al-Islam, Muslims are told the same thing. That in the night of power, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while in the cave, the angel Gabriel, who we know the Bible calls the Holy Spirit, right? Because mm -hmm. it says the Holy Spirit appeared to Mary. Then it later on tells you that was the angel Gabriel. Alright? Mm -hmm. So the angel Gabriel came to Rasulullah Muhammad and opened his chest, Alam Nashra, he says in the Quran, expanded his chest for him and inspired him to receive the scriptures. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, if we go back to Genesis and we see that certain righteous angels, this is Genesis 6, certain righteous angels were cast down from heaven and certain unrighteous angels were cast down from heaven, which the book of Ezekiel speaks about, then we know there must be Holy Spirits on earth and there must be what? Unholy unholy spirits on earth. So there are people like in the Pentecostal church who are getting unholy spirits and speaking in gibberish and casting themselves on the floor and foaming out the mouth and saying to the world that they're getting a holy spirit when the holy spirit does not descend that way. The holy spirit would descend in the disciples of the Messiah and gave them the power to speak in different tongues as the books of Acts explain, not speaking in gibberish. So yes, there is a link between the unholy spirits and the sons of Canaan, the cursed seed, because their soul, or I should say, their spirit is the spirit of these demons, unholy spirits, that to drive their emotions, as opposed to your emotions, which are stimulated by the Holy Spirit. And a lot of blacks can get unholy spirits, like in Buddha religion, right, and in a Pentecostal church, where people call themselves getting the Holy Ghost, or getting unholy spirits. No holy ghost sent down from the heavenly father is going to snatch any 60 year old woman up out of a chair and throw her on the floor. Think about that. No spirit coming from heaven. When the Holy Spirit visited Mary, it did not snatch Mary up and throw her on the floor and Mary speaking gibberish. Right in the Bible, Mary conversed with the spirit. She said, Hail Mary, thou hast been chosen above the woman of the world. It spoke right to her. She said you should conceive of the Holy Spirit. Right? Right. Now, why is it in Mary's case, the Spirit didn't come in her 
chamber and she fall on the floor, start foaming and kicking and going, humble the baby the like they do. Why is it when in the Bible, when the angel, the Holy Spirit came to Mary, he articulated, he was very clear, he spoke to her, he told her she was going to conceive of the Holy Spirit, and he left and she was endowed with the Holy Spirit. Correct? Correct. Why is it when the Holy Spirit struck Jesus, when he was being baptized in the Jordan, why didn't Jesus fall down the water and go home from there? It said, Jesus rose up in a voice from heaven spoke and said, This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Correct? So when the Holy Spirit comes, he does not take the tambourine out your hand and throw it on the floor, flip you over on the ground, have you foaming, kicking out the mouth and going gibberish, 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 gibberish. That must be a unholy spirit. Because a Holy Spirit is going to come inside of you and make you feel good. A Holy Spirit is not so good because I've seen people in Central Park with a group of people sitting around playing bongos, get what people in church are called the Holy Spirit, and it ain't nothing to do with God. You ever been in Central Park and watch wine old people are playing drum and wine old goes out and starts acting fool and starts jumping around and kicking, acting crazy? Well, you can do that listening to the right James Brown record. People go to discotheques and they be in these clubs from 10 o'clock to 4 in the morning, driven by the beat of this music, by the redundancy of this music. You ask, why do your kids spend their, the latter part of their life in discotheques and clubs, it's the beat, it's the rhythm, the consistency of the beat that gets you out your seat and makes you want to move. Same thing happens in Christian church. If they stop that gospel and put down them tambourines, and you don't, you don't hear about it happening to the boring Lutherans, do you? You go to a Lutheran church, the Lutheran church is the boringest church of all the churches. There's no singing, there's none of that. They have simple carols written by white folks with no soul, with no expression. Those people never get the Holy Spirit in the Lutheran church. So what is it? Only certain churches get the Holy Spirit if the same Holy Spirit is coming down from the Christ who sits on the right hand side of the Lord. Only certain churches get the privilege. No, 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 no. no. These people are playing games. Those people are being possessed by the unholy spirit that throws them on the ground and makes them foam out the mouth and speak in gibberish. So yes, the white man as he's called, or the Jew for a more precise name of the devil, right? He is the one who sends out unholy spirits. What we're doing today, I'll get into the book of Revelation. And if you get into the book of Revelation 16, 16, it tells you right there about, let's just turn to it for the time being. Revelation 16, 16. It says, Behold, I come as a thief in the night. Right? Mm-hmm. Right. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garment. Go ahead. Lest he shall walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathereth them together in a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. I went. I took you too far down. We should start at thirteen. So I, 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 I jumped to Armageddon because the point is, Armageddon is a place in Israel today in Palestine, which they call Haifa. All right, which is, they're going to tell you this is where the beast is going to be at. But let's go to 13. And I saw three unclean spirits, like a frog, come out of the mouth of the dragon. This dragon they're talking about is in relation to the book of Revelation chapter 13, which in, maybe, inshallah, today I might deal with. The three beasts is described in there in detail. Right? And out of the mouth of the beast. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. For what? For they are the spirits of devils. They're the spirits of the devils. Now it's going to go on from 14, 15, and 16 to take you right into the new state of Israel. Established over there in Haifa. How they pushed the saints out, which were the Muslims there, the peacemakers, Jesus we call them, and overtook the country and established a state. And in that spot, devilish men is raising. So there are beings on earth, as Jesus speaks of in the book of Revelation chapter 16, that are driven by the spirit of the devil. And the spirit of the devil would be unholy spirit. Okay. Why did our Creator let the 200 fallen angels descend to earth and then send Adam there? Whenever we say why about our Creator, we have to take refuge in the Creator from our wicked selves, possibly. You understand what I'm saying? Whenever we start whying the Heavenly Father, it's very important that we say first, because the angels did that, they questioned. That's why they got cast down. It's important that we say, I seek protection in you from the wicked that might be speaking through me. Because we don't ask why the Heavenly Father, you don't ask why He gave you potatoes. You just enjoy them. (laughs) But when it's something we don't understand, we want to know why He did it. Okay? Now, if you go back, it'll tell you why. It says, And it came.
came to pass when men, this is human beings, began to multiply on the face of the earth. They were living on earth, not beneath it. And that's important because there were men living beneath it. On the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. They started having children. That the sons of Allah saw the daughters of man, that they were beautiful. And they took them, wives, of all which they chose. Now, watch it change. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. For what? He is also flesh. He. This is not saying, we just was talking about sons of God, but now we stopped and said, He, a certain spirit, is not going to always be there. This is why Jesus told the Christians in John that he was there in the beginning with God. Because this is a description right here in the books of Genesis chapter 6 of Jesus the Messiah, the spirit. He said, my spirit will not always die with man. How old will he be? Yet his days shall be 120 years. That's how old Jesus would be when he died. That's why when John saw him, <laughs> in the Bible, he saw him with white hair. That's why when Daniel saw him, in his revelation, he saw him with white hair. If Jesus had white hair at the age of 33, he was a nervous wreck. But when they saw him in the book of Revelation, throughout the Revelation, where they keep describing the appearance of Jesus, they say he had hair like lambs or as white as snow. They saw him in his old age. The way the Bible clearly puts it. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for he also is flesh. He's not just spirit, Jesus, but he's also a man. Jesus said that himself. He said, My spirit is willing, it's my flesh that is weak. He made it clear that he's a man. But now he said, Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty. Now he changes. First he speaks about his sons in the scripture, the righteous. The sons of God are the righteous angels. The sons of God, they say, came down and married women. Which we refer to in the Bible and Revelation as the 24 elders who sit around the throne. Alright, now he's going to go into unholy angels. And, I said, there were giants in the earth in those days. Now we then separated from man and from the good angels. There were giants in the earth in those days. What happened? And also, after that, when the sons, after the giants were here... Then the sons, when the sons of Allah came into the daughters of man, they bore children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. So they're saying that the first, there was these demons down here, or which refer to as uh, cherubim, unholy angels, and then the heavenly father sent down holy angels to go into man. He's going to tell you why. Because man was doing nothing but wickedness. His whole imagination was nothing but wickedness. His Spirit, his soul was wickedness. He needed to be reborn. The same way Christians claim today that the spirit comes down out of heaven to give them a rebirth. The same thing happened back in Genesis. The Almighty sent angels down so that the family of Seth could be saved by being reborn. But meanwhile, the demons also was there. Well, didn't Jesus the Messiah have the same problem when he was here? Wasn't he confronted with people that were possessed by demons also? And casting out legions. So every place righteousness gathers, you're going to find Satan right there. If you don't believe me, read the books of Job chapter 1. When the elders came to go to heaven, the devil was right there with them. Every place you get a group of us together, one black person is sitting there representing the devil. Now you all think about who it is. <laughs> it could be anybody sitting in there. The devil sends him. That's his job. He represents the devil. He doesn't even know he's being used as a vessel for the devil. That's his job. He's always been that way. When Jesus gathered, well, who was there? Yep. Judas. And didn't they tell you that Judas was possessed by the devil? He had to be to persecute Christ, the Messiah. Okay, number four. Again, and there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of Allah came in unto the daughters of men, that means had sex with them, because angels personified, and bore children to them, the same became mighty men, which were men of this, what we refer to as the 24 elders around the throne. Now, and what did it say in number five? And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Man was awake, nothing but evil inside out. His thoughts and all have been perverted by the wickedness of the land of Nod, where the unholy angels took residence, where Cain went to visit. When he was cast out of the garden, and it said Cain was driven away, he went to the land of Nod. Well, if he went to the land of Nod and nobody was there, he would have been alone. But he went to the land of Nod and he 
encountered a man named Lamech who eventually took his life. Not Lamech, the father of Noah. A different Lamech, which is in Genesis. Go on. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth. He was saddened because of what man had become. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Almighty was hurt because man that he had created in his image after his likeness has now taken on the image and the likeness of the beast, the devil, the dragon, that old serpent. And what do you see today people doing? Who are they emulating? Are they emulating the prophets of the scriptures of righteousness? Or are they emulating the devil and the beast and his ways? The harlot the ba and Babylon and her ways. We come along and tell you to dress like Christ dressed and you call us fools. But you will go out and dress like the beast dressed. You'll live like the beast tells you to live. But if I tell you to, to put on the garb of righteousness like the Bible says in Revelation chapter 4 verse 4 and many, many other places it speaks about a pure white garment. I look like some type of fanatic who thinks he's in the desert. I am in the desert. I'm in the wilderness of North America. Go on. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You see that? Now, this was all in Genesis chapter 6. Why they came down is in Genesis chapter 4 and 5. Genesis chapter 4 is going to tell you that the Almighty is going to give Cain a chance to repent. He's going to actually give him a chance to repent. But Cain is not going to listen. And he's still going to kill his brother. Read it. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. And she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bore his brother, Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Go ahead. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground on an offering unto the Lord. Now the books of Numbers 18, 12 will back it up. You can look it up on your own time. But it says in the course of time. This was no instant thing. The day after they were born, they were cutting each other up. In due time. Remember now, the devil was cast out of the garden with them. So in due time, it just happened. Number four. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock. Now what Abel did is like they do in the traditional sacrifices of Israel. Yeah. Didn't select the withered or the crippled or the deformed or the blemished or the spotted calf. They picked the firstling of their flock, the very best of their flock, to offer to the Lord at these sacrifices at the time. But not Cain. Go ahead, watch and see what happens. And Abel, he brought the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. You see now, Numbers 18, 17 and Leviticus 3, 16. And of course, Paul wrote about it his own way. And that's Hebrews 11.4 is going to talk about these sacrifices. We won't go there because it'll take too much time. But, they use here, for lacking. But, a negative connotation. But what? For unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. Why? Because Cain did not present his very best. Abel presented his very best to the Lord. And I'm not talking about give me your very best in tidings and offerings. That's the devil at work. So listen, give me this, give me that. Give me that, give me this, give me that. That's the devil at work. You don't pay for salvation. But this is what they do. That, so this has nothing to do with that. This is talking about the sacrifice to the Lord, the first offering to the Lord, to give him back for that which he has given us. Not to the church. No mission, missionary. That's a big con. Go ahead. And Cain was very wroth, and Cain his was confidence what? fell. He was what? Wroth. They didn't particularly want black people to understand that word because we don't use words like wroth. They mean angry. He was very angry. What did he do? And his confidence fell. That's right. He let his confidence drop because he was mad. Because the Almighty accepted Abel's offering because Abel put his best in it and did not respect his. It didn't say he didn't accept it. It said he didn't respect it. You see the difference? So now, 
Jesus. He's mad and he let his confidence drop. You know what confidence drop means? You ever get your child mad and watch it go sit in the corner and soak? Because you didn't say things the way they wanted. They sit down and go, oh, And they sit there and they poke me. You call it pouting. That's letting your confidence drop. What happened? And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Now the Lord is speaking to him. And the Lord, in verse 6, said unto Cain, Why are you mad? And why is thy continent fallen? Why are you mad and why do you let yourself become so depressed about this? Proverbs 15, 13. Support. If thou dost well, shall, shall thou, thou not be accepted? <laughs> See how merciful the Almighty is? He said, why are you depressed? Why are you mad? All you got to do is go do the right thing. And it will be accepted. Go ahead. And if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door. But if you don't put your best foot forward, believe me, sin will catch up with you. If you don't do your best before the Lord, you will become a sinner. If you don't do everything to serve the Lord, His way, you will be a sinner. And the devil is waiting for you. Go ahead, he'll tell you that. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. The him here... And his here is the devil, which is being called sin in that verse. It changed from sin to a person. The devil is sin. So if you sit around moping with your lips poked out because the white man is not giving you the job you want, then you develop into some black revolutionary, you're setting yourself up for self-destruction. When the only thing you could do is straighten yourself out inside. Work from the inside out. You understand? And they're going to do more things to stir you because blood is part of their game. It said the blood of the saints is on their hands in the books of Revelation. You are the saints. You're the original seed of Abraham. They will do more devilish. And I feel cyber preachers going out marching around with signs expecting to get some reaction. You're not going to get no reaction. The only reaction you're going to get from them is more death, more black people. And that's because we didn't listen. When the teacher before me was here, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he told you people to organize for yourselves, but you couldn't listen. You went and followed some man who made you subhuman. What do I mean, subhuman? I mean acting for things from the United Nations that you was already entitled to by the Constitution. Like civil rights. The Constitution already gives you civil rights as an American citizen. So to act for something from the government that you're already entitled to is to say that you're not really under the umbrella of the Constitution. Like I said before, don't take me from the back of the bus to the front of the bus. Give me my own bus company. Then I'll begin to understand freedom. You understand? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. You see that? After the Almighty had come to Cain and spoke to Cain and told Cain after the sacrifice that all he had to do is give a better offering and it will be all forgotten. What did Cain do? He still set his brother up to kill him. He could have repented, but he chose to kill him. The first murder on earth. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am the, I my brother's the first, keeper? <laughs> the first lie of a human being. See, the first lie of the devil is when he said, Did God say that you eat thereof? That if you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open? For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as God. So go ahead and do it. <laughs> when he, the first lie was the devil calling God a liar. The second lie is a human being. So the negative energy you see has transposed itself from the devil now into a human being. The first human being to tell a lie. Look who he's lying to. Go ahead. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. The spirit is in the blood. The Almighty said, I know he's dead. Because I hear his spirit calling to me. Go ahead. And now art thou cursed from the earth. Now you have a curse, Cain. This ain't no white man, you know. This is you. This is us. Which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth 
yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day and from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Who is the Lord talking to? Some people say Cain. He says, And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, talking to the devil, Therefore, whoever slayeth Cain, you see, what? Whoops. Vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain. least any whom find him should kill him. Go ahead. And then what did Cain do now that he's being put out of the garden, which is in Eden? He's being put out of the Arabia area. Where is he going? And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. That was a holy land. Why they call it the holy land? Because the Lord's shadows on it. And dwelt in the land of Nod. On the east of Eden. He went further up towards Turkey and Assyria. Out of Arabia Peninsula where the garden was. But there's people here. Now we're talking about Adam and Eve. And Cain and Abel. According to your Bible. Who were these people that he met here? Where did they come from? Were there people on earth before Adam and Eve? Not according to your Bible's sake. So who are these people I ask the Christian preachers and the rabbis? It's in the Bible, but everybody jumps around and jumps over it like it don't exist. You understand? It told you in six who they were. What did it say? That there were giants in the earth, earth in those days. And these giants were called Jebarian, or Nephilians as they call them, who came down from heaven when they were cast out, as it mentions in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. These were the devil's seed. And they came down to earth. These are the fallen angels who were sent down to earth like Revelation said they would be. And they were here before Allah brought down the 24 elders. That's your fallen angels, your cherubim, who came down on earth and lived and set up a land called Nod, which means wilderness in Hebrew. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. And the reason why I read this is because if the land is Nod, it was named Nod for a reason. And the next two verses will show you why it was named Nod. Alright, 17 of Genesis 4. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. And this is not Enoch Idris on the other side of Seth's family. There's another Enoch. And he built a city. And did what? Called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. So therefore, the name Nod had to have come from one of the names of the fallen angels. So they were multiplying there. It was a city. And unto Enoch was born Erad. And Erad begot Mahujala. And Mahujala, he begot Methuselah. And they read it in English like this here. Methusael. All right? And Mihujail begot Mithusail. All right, that's the biblical Greek interpretation. And Mithusail begot a man named Lamech. This Lamech is not Lamech, I must repeat, nor father. This is a different one. But make note that Cain's children are being named the same as Seth's descendants, a trick of the devil, to try to mess up the records of the scriptures. But it didn't work. Because as you read on, you find out that Lamech took two wives, and eventually Lamech is the one who killed Seth, and says that he got sevenfold curse for doing it. And that ends chapter uh, 4, and then by the time you go into chapter 5, it speaks of the generation, the family of Adam in the day that the Lord created him in the likeness of the Lord, and he made him. And male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, in the day that they were created. Well, both of them were in Adam, so they both were called Adam when they were created. But then woman came out of Adam later. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. And 
then it will go on to tell you about the seed of Seth. And they'll use the same name. Enos, Canaan, Canaan, Methuselah, Methuselah. And it'll go straight on down. Then we get into Genesis chapter 6, of which I told you. So the answer to the question is, because of man's wickedness and involvement with the negative angels. And the negative angels, it wasn't, why did the Almighty send them down? They were cast out of heaven on their own. Get ye all of you down from here, the Quran says. They wasn't sent here to tempt man. They were cast out because they had waged war in the heaven. You follow that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, my thoughts were uh, directed in the sense that into every uh, organization or or religious uh, body that someone may venture into, uh, there is a search and a need for something that uh, you haven't been able to find in any previous organization. And uh, I am wondering, what am I looking for in an organization like this, uh, what type of security is available to me? Uh, and I, I don't mean only our uh, physical or material security, but uh, my spiritual security as to uh, where am I going? What am I guaranteed uh, in the future? What are we guaranteed by uh, attaining this information and this knowledge? What can I do with it? First of all, it's not what you will get, it's what you will earn. The problem with human beings on earth today is everything has been given to them. And way back in Genesis, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed you in the garden and gave you everything and told you not to touch one thing, you made it your business to go directly to that one thing and disobey the Heavenly Father. So since that fall from grace in the garden, man is no longer does not have access to the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said you must work by the sweat of the brow. Now the Holy Quran in the 103rd chapter tells us why Islam is important for us. It starts off by saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and it starts, Wal Asr. The word Asr is the Arabic word for Asir, for juice, to squeeze the juice out of something. They say time in many translations. But the word Asiyah means to squeeze the juice. And this is saying, well, Asr. And they're basing it upon a period of time when you, the physical you, and you, the spiritual you, will be separated from each other. Okay? And he says what? Inna l-insana lafi khusr. Inna means surely el insan All you forgetful beings. The word insan is written up as human being or man. But the word insan means forgetful. And surely all of you forgetful beings, lafi khusr are in a great loss. You are losing this battle against time. So it says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Well Asr, Inna Linsana Lafi Khusr. Then it tells you an exception. It goes, Illa Elladina Amanu. Except for those of you, Amanu, who have Iman, faith. They put their faith in Allah. It says, Illa Elladina Amanu. And then it tells them what else they do. Wa amilu salihat. The word amala in Arabic means to work, physical labor. And many scholars say that it means to do things. The word for do in Arabic is fa'ala. That's the same kind of verb to do. The word for to work in Arabic is amala. So here it says wa amilu salihat. The word salah means to fix something that has been broken. Salah. Sad lamb hat. Something that has been broken has to be fixed. And here it tells us that except for those who are faithful, who have the faith needed, and what do they do? They work, they labor to perfect themselves, to fix themselves. Because you, you are broken when you fell from grace. You were in tune with the Almighty. It says in the beginning of Genesis, he walked and talked with Idris. He walked and talked with this one. He walked and talked with this one. And now you're forced to pray. You no longer can walk and talk with the Almighty. You have to pray and hope that he hears your prayer. But there was a time before man fell from grace that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to walk and talk directly with him, you see. But they forfeited this right by listening to the devil. Now man has to earn his way back. So it says, well, I'll say, Allah fi إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا صَالِحَاتِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا صَالِحَاتِ Except for those who work 
who are faithful and who work to perfect themselves, to correct themselves. What else do they do? وَتَوَاصُوا بِالْحَقَّ And they turn people towards al-haq, back beyond any doubt, as people call it, the truth. The word saddaq in Arabic means truth. The word haq means back beyond any doubt. وَتَوَاصُوا بِالصَّبْرِ And they turn people to be patient. They tell you two very things. This is what they work. First, they work to perfect themselves. They get themselves corrected. Or they say for righteousness in many translations. And then the next thing they do is they turn their attention on others and try to make these people have nothing but the facts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and patience that's going to be needed to endure to the end. Bismillahir Rahman ar Rahim wal Asr in al insana la fi khusr illa al ladina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil haqq wa tawasaw bil sabr. This is that short section in the Quran that three verses. And it's the essence of your question. What is in it for you? Jannah. You can get back into that garden that you was originally created in if you learn discipline, which is patience. Live the truthful way and you to correct the mistakes about our nature that has been introduced to us by the devil who took us off of the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has put us on his path. You follow? The pension plan in Al-Islam is to retire without a watch. You see, the white man is a shrewd devil. When people retire in the Western world, he gives them a watch so they can watch the rest of the days of their life pass on to death. In El Islam, the pension plan is that you retire, and if you was obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will make Jannah, paradise. You follow? The realities of paradise start from within, not out. Because many people say, how do I know there's a paradise? You know there's a paradise when you see a baby born. And the joy that comes over you when the beauty in a newborn baby, you can feel the, the gratitude, you can feel a total uh, bliss take over your body. These are the first stages from the physical plane that leads to the spiritual plane of paradise. So it's not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you, it's what you have to give back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of what He had given us in the garden and how we were disobedient. Okay, but my question... Uh is uh, uh, how do I arrive at this uh, decision or understanding to first accept or to uh, I'm not afraid to work and I like doing things I like to I like things done and I know the only way by getting something done is by doing it not by talking about it or holding meetings about it and too often I find that with a lot of black organizations uh, because they were permitted to go to your colleges and universities became so highly intellectual that they intellectualize everything rather than uh, perform work. I am, I, I am not uh, a part of the, uh, organizations like this. The sad thing about that is in order for you to be able to judge if a person has the truth or not, you'll have to have a certain amount of knowledge to ask the right question. That's the problem. People start off without a certain amount of knowledge and they ask questions and expect the answers to come to them by their emotions. In order for a person to really get satisfied with the facts or the truth of the scriptures, they got to first have a certain amount of knowledge of the scriptures. Because I can bring up incidents to verify who you are, why you're here, what you're doing here, if you've never studied the scriptures in properly. I don't mean have read the Bible according to what King James said, or I mean an in-depth study of who you are, then there's no way a person can convince you because what you're doing is you're not coming as a student, you're coming as a skeptic, not intentionally, because you don't have enough knowledge to come as a student to ask constructive questions. So what people do is they come and say, make me understand. And a person can't make you understand until you have the knowledge to ask the right questions. Thus, we have put out a series and series and series of pamphlets for years to say, read, study. Because the first word that was said to Rasulullah Muhammad was, Ikra, read. That's the first thing they said to him. And that's our confirmation in Islam that we should always do everything under that word. Read. We must read first. And once you start to study, then you'll be able to ask good questions. But, or I can sit back and say, well, ask me the questions that confuses you, and I'll do my best to answer them. But if you don't have a certain amount of knowledge, it's going to take a long time. Because first I'll have to teach you about the question, and then teach you the answer. Okay, so it does take time. And we don't classify ourselves just another organization. You know, there are a lot of black organizations, like you said, and I agree with you, they have a lot of meetings and get nothing done. No one can ever say that Jamaat Ansar Allah doesn't get things done. 
Anybody who looks at the, the growth of our community, which is all black, can see us growing in the name of Allah, We're opening new communities constantly. We're progressing in every walk of life that you can think of. For our children's education, right, the language we imported, teachers from overseas to teach them. We have our own farm, we have our own, everything is set up for us in the name of Allah. Because in the end of the day, it says, if you take up one step in his direction, he'll take the other ten towards you. So no one can say we're not doers. We're not like the other orthodox Muslims or a lot of groups that sit around and talk about what they're going to get done. It's obvious by where you're standing in this neighborhood that you walk through. And we have this in Philadelphia and Chicago and Detroit and Jamaica and in London and in Trinidad. It's obvious that the Ansar Allah community are not talkers. We're doing. It's very obvious. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. And I appreciate the type of personality that you have that says, I'm a person who wants to do. Right? A lot of people in here who don't want to do. They just, you know how black people are. They want to come in and sit around and wait for the cloud to open for them. And that's not the way. We have to go out and provide for our children and our women. That is our duty as men. And, and I'm a workaholic myself, so I can understand how you feel. I have to be doing something for the nation, otherwise I get sick mentally. <laughs> you see? Thank you. A pleasure. Next question? Okay. I wanted to know, are you the lamb? All ye are lamb. That's what Jesus said. As many as believe on him, to them he gives power to become the sons of God. All of you are lambs laid before slaughter. He said that. If your question is, am I the lamb, the only lamb, there is no only lamb. That's the trick that Christians use. Lamb is used throughout the Bible. So, you follow? What is represented in here by me is Revelation chapter 14, 6. I saw another angel fly in the midst of the heavens, having an everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue of people, saying with a loud voice, Fear Allah, and give glory to Him. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahmani Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een, Ahdina Surat Al-Mustaqeem, Sirat al-Ladina and Amta alayhim, Ghayr al-Mahdubi alayhim wal ad I mean, that may sound like gibberish to you, but that's the first verse of the new song. And your children will be able to sing it. Not you. You can come in here and learn your Arabic and mosey your way through it. <laughs> but the children are the ones that are not defiled of the hollow like that brother pointed out. They have not lived deliciously in her. They have not drunk with the wrath of the fornication of the holland. They have not given up their virginity. He's right. They're the seed. I'm going to tell you why it's the female seed, to make it clear. So we'll understand what we're talking about. Mary's mother, Hannah, or Anna, was chosen. And she gave birth to Mary, who was raised by Zachariah, who gave birth to Christ. You see that? Now... Anna or Hannah was not a very special pious woman, just the wife of Imran, just a regular woman, Mary's mother, in Israel. And they were living in sin in the time of before Jesus in Israel. So they were living under Roman law like today. So he took a normal woman just like you, and he let you give birth to Mary. Your father? And when Mary was born, they were saying, um, but this is a woman child, how could she be the savior? <laughs> It says, because this woman, you, was supposed to give birth to Mary, and Mary will be raised in purity so that she can give birth to an angel. And that angel was the Messiah, Jesus. You see? So you are the first begotten of the dead. You must be raised first. Then you will give birth to children who will be raised in righteousness, and then they will give birth to the angelic being to a war against Satan. You can't do it while you are still defiled by the holly. You won't give birth to them yourself. You understand that? You cannot give birth to the righteous. You must give birth to the children that will give birth to the righteous the same way Imran and Hannah gave birth to Mary. And Mary gave birth to the Messiah. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Our children are the Savior. It says the young will see the vision and the old will be dreaming dreams. So you're the lamb also. I thank you for the privilege, but the responsibility is greater than I could bear. Did the angel Gabriel was a man or was he a spirit 
that I had listened to one of your tapes and you had said that the angel had to bring Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, a written scripture. So I was wondering that the angel gave him. How did the angel, how did the revelation come to me? Turn to Daniel chapter 8. This might help, you know, explain what you're saying. Verse 15. This is when Daniel is getting a vision. And don't forget, when the angel appeared to Moses again, he saw him as a burning bush, again as light. All right? And Allah is called in the Quran, the Lord of Samawati will Ard, the light of the heavens and the earth. This is Daniel's 8. Uh, 15th verse? Yes, 15th verse. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And it came to pass, when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning, then, behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. Go ahead. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Yule, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. Now this is another prophet in the Torah named Daniel, who's having the exact same experience that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had. That he saw, first he got a vision, and then the vision manifested as an angel in the form of a man, and then a voice from heaven told that angel to go and give Daniel a certain amount of insight, and he did. So the same story exactly that happened to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while in the cave is happening again in the books of Daniel. In case people of the scriptures try to deny its authenticity, it's not something new. It happened before the exact same way. Okay? Read it again so people can understand. <clears throat> and it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning. Then, behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Yule, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. But he touched me and set me upright. So therefore this angel also touched him, so he proved that he had a physical being. He had went into a coma for the vision, but then the angel touched Daniel physically and made him sit up. You follow? So therefore this angel started off a vision, personified as a man, took Daniel into a dream state, and then brought Daniel back into the physical. Go ahead again. From the beginning or continue? No, just from that, continue on. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. But the time appointed, the end shall be. So now he told Daniel that he was going to give him knowledge of the prophecy of the end of the world. When the unholy angels was first thrown out of heaven and they went to the land of Nod, they took the form of men and women and a black men and women. Am I correct? Yes, they came down in the form of human beings. Black. That's right. So uh, why was it necessary when they left during the flood, why was it necessary for them to come back down into the bodies of Caucasians when they could have just go in the form of black men all over again. Because Allah put a curse on them. And that curse they refer to in the Bible as that old leprosy. Allah wanted us to know the devil. Our biggest problem is not coming from white people. Our biggest problem is coming from black people who come in the skies of white people who pretend they're with us. They call them sheep. They call them wolves in sheep clothing. They'll put on a white jalabiyah and stuff and really be a Sunni Muslim or an enemy and pretend they're an Ansar and come amongst us you follow that? Yes. And then you'll start throwing out fists of fire. He made the devil manifest in the flesh. He put a mark on him like he told Cain. I'm going to mark your seed. Don't forget, the devil is a part of Cain's seed. Though Cain himself, not canon. Though Cain himself had nothing to do with the devil, Allah put a mark on him that meant when they see you, they will know you. And Cain said, but when they see me, they're going to kill me. And Allah says, I'll protect you so that they won't kill you. You follow that? And the white man roams the whole world, a raving beast, a devil, destructing people's cultures, raping their women, pulling down society, destroying their books, spreading their false teachings of Christianity, and then destroying a culture. People still let the devil in, though they can look at him and see what he did in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They see what he's doing in South Africa. They see what he did in Vietnam. They see what he's doing right now in South America, Puerto Rico. They see how he's getting ready to mess with the people throughout the Caribbean when he did in Grenada. They see this, but still you walk down the street and walk up to a white person and act like they're not a devil. That's because way back in Genesis, the Almighty said, though they have a mark on him, man won't dare touch you. 
Because vengeance is mine, says the Lord. It's not in my and your power to remove the devil. It's to restrain him to raise our people. And that we can't do because the devil vowed that he would make our people love him. Because he would make evil fear seeming. He'll make what is evil look like fun. You follow what I'm saying? And that's the recreation of this world. The devil is in this world. But our biggest fear, I repeat again, is not a white man in white skin that the law made apparent. Our biggest fear of black people who really come in the name of the devil and call themselves Muslims, say they're Israelites or Hebrews, and they, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to trap them. Right. For the white man. Or they catch you and they come up to you and pretend like they're an answer and their whole intention is just to try to trap you. And they don't realize that they become a devil. Because, I, like I explained in last week's class, good angels can become bad angels. And that's a sign because Iblis was amongst the good angels and fell from grace. So a lot of black people become the devil in their pursuit of trying to be heavy and trying to be impressive. Because that's what happened in Genesis. What did they promise that the devil was? Because what they said, because Allah does know that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open and you shall be as God. So black people are suffering from a complex of wanting to be heavy. And sometimes in the process of trying to be heavy, they curse their own leaders. They burst their own, the people sent to them. And the devil senses that and seizes their hearts and turns them into opposers of the truth in a subtle kind of way while they pretend they're pursuing the truth. What they're really doing is pursuing faults in the truth which they cannot find because the devil has been trying to find faults with the scriptures since the beginning of time. They'll never find the fault in the scriptures. They can find faults in Imam Isa. They can find faults in the word Ansar. They can find a misspelled word in the book but they will not find fault in the teachings because the teachings are truth. And everybody came out and no dwindled little half-wit is going to come along in the latter day after 20 years of service in the way of Allah. We watched the nation of Islam rise and fall. We watched the black Israelites rise and fall. We watch the Hebrew nation rise and fall. We watch the black Panthers, their young lords. We watch them all rise and fall. We watch all the African culture rise and fall. And the Nubian Islamic Hebrew mission was there all the time. And people say, I remember those parents, I remember those brothers soldiers. And everybody said the same thing. They'll never make it. They'll never make it. We didn't have to make it. We was already made since Father Abraham. It wasn't about us making it. That was their problem. They were trying to see whether or not the Ansar Law community would develop into something. We didn't have to develop into something. We always was something. We were the truth. Incarnated in human form. And whenever a Sunni Muslim came up on one of us, he got to the point where he knew there was no combat on Ansar. It took years for us to get to this point. We have no conflict with anybody now. Nobody tries to verse our doctrine. Whether they're the devil or the devil in the disguise of a Sunni Muslim or Ahmadiyya. And now we're spending time and we're getting ready to shake the Arab world. That's why we're getting to put our pamphlets in Arabic. Because we're getting ready to shake them too. No one can stand against the words of Allah. And nothing is more powerful than the gift that Allah gave y'all in the West under the name of the Nubian Islamic Hebrew. 